Hi, I'm Eric Brinsfold, and welcome to Ask a Dev. Today's question comes from Mark. He asks, what's the best video player SDK for playing HLS streams in an Android app? Great question, Mark. HLS, or HTTP Live Streaming, was created by Apple a number of years ago for streaming video content. Android's native support is spotty at best for earlier versions, so you will need to use a third-party video player to fully support as many Android devices as possible. Some of the more popular HLS video players are Adobe Prime Time, JW Player, Brightcove, Visualon, and IJK Player. So, how do you decide which is the best for your app? One thing to look for is device support. The Android device landscape is growing more and more each day, and you want to make sure that the video player will be supported on all these new devices. If you want to reach as many users as possible, make sure the player supports back to Gingerbread or Froyo. The same goes for chipsets. If the player is using native code, make sure that both ARM and x86 libraries are provided. One way to ensure good device support is to go with a commercial video player provider rather than an open source solution. This gives you the benefit of having a paid support option to help you troubleshoot problems with the player. If your app is dependent on video running flawlessly, it is very helpful to have a support staff that is quick to respond to questions and has a thorough knowledge of integrating the library. Your app should always be conscious of how much battery uses, but especially so when performing battery-intensive functionality like full-screen video playback. You can compare the battery usage of different players using a battery profiling tool such as Trefin. Trefin is a tool provided by Qualcomm for profiling Android phones that use the Snapdragon processor. Using one of their supported devices, like a Nexus 5, you can profile the battery usage of a specific app and get a detailed graph of battery usage over time, as well as the total count of power usage in milliwatts. Aside from just monitoring battery usage, Trepin can also provide usage information on the CPU, GPU, and network traffic, among other things. Video quality, obviously, is also very important. Most video players allow you to control the bitrate, but a good player should be able to adapt bitrate to the current network conditions at any given time. When testing, try to start all the players off with the same initial bitrate and see how they adapt under similar network conditions. The last few tips are good for evaluating any kind of third-party library, not just video players. First, make sure the SDK is well designed. For an Android app, the library should use design patterns that are familiar to the language, like native exceptions and inheritance. You want the library to feel like a first-class citizen for the language, rather than something that was quickly ported so the provider can claim support for your language. Finally, another thing to consider is the size of the library. You should know how much the player and the code needed to integrate it adds to your overall app size. Smaller is always better. More important, though, is the increase in method count. Most Android developers have run into issues with the dex limit, which is basically a limit in the number of methods that can be included in a single app. We now have the ability to create multiple DEX files to allow for more than 65,000 methods in an app, but this can cause some side effects like longer app startup time on some devices and longer build times. So it's best to standard that limit if at all possible. Well, that's it for this episode. As always, tweet us your questions with hashtag AskADev or just leave them in the comments.